Hi guys, Zed here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I have prepared something quick and easy for you. We're gonna tinker with the solder iron again and use for a brief moment the 3D printer. That's only if you wanna follow exactly my steps. Some time ago, I've bought loads of USB-C cables in preparation for the newer generation of electronics which come with that connector as default. Meanwhile, I've been having loads of issues with the reliability of the mini USB cables so, I decided to do a transplant. Not sure if this video is first of its kind, but personally, I couldn't find anything on the internet about it. Please watch the next video, and after that, I would like to catch up on a few things with you guys. Before we proceed, I would like to show you the tools we're gonna be using. Wire pliers, solder wick, solder iron, solder, tweezers, chisel tips, craft knife, one and a half millimeter hex. I'm going to start by removing the original connector. Try and add some solder on all pads and gently work your way around it. The important thing here is you don't pull the connector in any direction. Just gently push it away in the direction of the main five pads. Next, we prepare the enameled wires. We trim them to size and clean the ends. Here I drew a diagram to show how to connect the wires. Make sure you follow them exactly. We proceed with soldering the wires to the Arduino. I recommend using a very fine tip on the iron. To make sure the procedure was successful, I decided to test and see if any of the wires are touching. One extra check I made, and didn't show it here, was to check the resistance of each wire after soldering the breakout side as well. You are free to use any breakout you can find on the market. The one I'm using is from Polulu. You can see me measuring the board here as I needed to print an adapter that will help fix the breakout to the breadboard. You don't have to worry about this, I have attached the download link in the description. We are going to fit the header pins that came with the breakout on the adapter we just printed. If for some reason they don't, feel free to use a drop of super glue. Carefully thread with the tweezers the enameled wires into the holes on the breakout. Once you've done that, you can proceed with making the final solders. I believe that this qualifies as looking at least half decent. Will it work or will it go down in flames? 
I'll tell you what. Judging by those two defunct boards you can see at the top of my mat means that now I know what I'm doing. Device manager detected it and the power LED is on. All we've got left to do is go to the Arduino app and select the right board. And of course the right port. We are going to try the classical blink sketch example that comes with the app. time we go back for a short word. Yes, I agree. This could have been done in so many other ways. I wanted something compact which doesn't come off when you fiddle with the cable. That's why I've used screws and assembled everything on a breadboard. Well, the Arduino Nano is supposed to be sitting on a breadboard anyway, so we might as well take advantage of it. I know it's not the cleanest of designs, but those enameled wires are highly reliable. My original design was based on this. It matches the pitch and everything else, and it would have been a perfect fit. Unfortunately, it would have been way more expensive in the end due to the availability of parts. I strongly recommend you track down those parts and fit them on the board yourselves. I believe it's the cleanest way to do this, but as I said, I wasn't in the position to do so at the moment of filming this video. If you were wondering what project I was going to use this board for, well, here it is. However, my idea of changing from mini USB to USB-C originated somewhere else. This was just a drill to see if it's achievable. I'm plotting something way more interesting, but I'm gonna have to wait until my next video to find out what it is. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ta-da!